Next up, we have um, Elspeth Keeling, who is a relaxed mommy, who has created a movement around being a relaxed mother. I wish I'd met you years ago. <laughs> After writing her first book, Relaxed Mama, in 2012, she started a Facebook page, Der Club von Relaxter Mothers, and my Dutch ain't that great, but, and started her own blog, Club von Relaxter Mothers, which is obviously, it means the Club of Relaxed Mothers. Um, the blog has 80,000 unique visitors and 350,000 page views per month, and an engaged audience of 136,000 plus fa fans on Facebook, and more than 13,000 followers on Instagram. Elspeth wrote several books for mothers and is a common speaker at family events. So let's welcome Elspeth Keeling. Thank you. I became a mother at the 1st of September, and this picture is a bit equal to yours. <laughs> this was 12 years ago, so I was a bit younger. Um, my daughter, Kate, was born and um, she was only three pounds. She was five weeks early, three pounds, so one and a half kilo. And um, uh, I was, she was five weeks early, so my maternity leave hadn't even started. I was working at PwC, at PricewaterhouseCoopers at that moment, and um, I, uh, I wasn't a writer yet. Um, although I, I love to write, and I wrote articles or stories and um, I wrote them in words. It was before blogging and um, I emailed them. I shared them uh, with friends um, and I shared them by mail. So um, really old fashioned. Um, I remember one story I wrote while I was pregnant and it was about my fear uh, of becoming what you say a real mom. Um, I was on a holiday in Italy on, um, on a campsite and I was watching all the moms and I noticed that a lot of them said no all the time to their children. Don't do this, don't do that. And um, a lot of moms uh, had a practical hairdo and I also noticed uh, <laughs> recognition. Uh, a lot of them had a practical hairdo and, um, and as I watched their faces, lots of them had mouths with the, were, the corner of their mouths were down. So I was shocked. Whereas the fathers, they were playing with their children, having fun, laughing. So um, in this uh, story I wrote, I asked my friends in this story, can you please warn me if I stop smiling, if my, the corners of my mouth go down, and if I'm going to cut my hair? Um, I didn't want, I, and I ended the story with, please, I don't want to be a real mom. Can I please be the dad? But then, obviously, I, I became a mother. Um, and, I, and, and I also, I became a real mom. Um, because um, after two years, I found myself in Bali. Uh, under a and, um, my daughter Kate was two years old. And I was stressed out, tired, and not smiling anymore. So I became my own worst nightmare. Let's have a look. Um, well, obviously that didn't happen overnight because the first year uh, I, you could really find me up there on Cloud uh, Nine. But a lot of I, I then realized that a lot of things happen when you're a mother, and uh, those nights you were talking about those nights. So you were talking about those nights. We all know them as a mother. Um, uh, well, things happen, and you change. So um, I became my worst nightmare, and it took me a while to find myself uh, again. Um, and then when I found myself again, two major things happened afterwards. Uh, one major thing was that um, I decided to write more, and the other thing was that my second child was born, and uh, Kate got a little brother, and his name is Teun, which is a really Dutch name, hard to pronounce for you, I guess. Um, and I started to write more, and um, uh, that went quite well, because I, uh, I won a writing competition in a big Dutch newspaper. Um, 
And then I thought, well, maybe I have to take this writing business a little bit more serious because all my friends like to read my stories. Uh, the, big, but the big Dutch newspaper obviously liked it. So I decided to quit my job at PwC and, um, and I started my own uh, business as a copywriter, commercial copywriter. Um, and on that day that I made this decision and I told my colleagues, uh, uh, it was the day of my 40th birthday, which is well, like a milestone as well. And it was also the day that my publisher asked me to write a book for moms, um, which was Relax Mama. It took a while. And then it was April 2012, then this book came out. Um, 101 tips om een relaxte moeder te worden, te zijn en te blijven. <laughs> Or it was translated in English as well for American market. And all of a sudden I lost two, uh, I lost two tips. So <laughs> I don't know where they had gone. <laughs> and 99 pick me ups for new moms, how to relax, survive and even, and even enjoy those first months. Um, it's a book, uh, not with a lot of text, because when you're a new mom, you don't have really a lot of time to read. So um, it's our, a lot of one-liners, funny pictures, and sayings. Please wait, breads are loading. I, I really love the pink cloud. We apologize, but cloud nine is temporarily out of service. And your new boss is ruthless. Stress me never. So um, th this last one really suits me. Um, this book is about um, not being too serious about the motherhood and the stress it gives you. Uh, it helps you laugh about uh, things when you're a new mom. But it's also about uh, being serious about yourself and don't, not forgetting yourself. So it has two message messages. Um, Because there was not a lot of money to promote this book, um, uh, me and the publisher, we decided to uh, start this Facebook page um, to do the promotion of the book. And we called it uh, Club van Relaxte Moeders or the Relax Moms Club. Um, and I think that was a really uh, good decision to give it that name because of the club feeling. Uh, and I used that, uh, that page to, um, to, uh, to tell my friends and family and readers, potential readers, um, uh, about the, the book release, about um, uh, press uh, attention for the book, um, about where you can buy the book, but I also use it to develop new content because my ideas kept floating, but my book was finished. So uh, the Facebook page was a good way to keep it floating all the time. Um, Well, I, I, had, I had no idea what to expect from this uh, page. And uh, one night, I was sitting on the couch with my husband, my, uh, how do you call it, a partner in crime. I brought him as well, he's over there. <laughs> And uh, my partner in crime asked me, so, when are you happy then? How many followers are you aiming for? Uh, and I looked at him blankly. <laughs> uh, no idea. Maybe uh, 400 followers? And he said, okay, deal. When, you, uh, uh, when, uh, when there are 400 followers, I buy you a bottle of champagne. And that did the trick, I guess. It worked. So that's tip number one. Um, uh, 400 followers, I don't know how many months it took, weeks it took uh, to have them. But in September uh, 2012, uh, the page had seven or 800 followers. And a year later, um, 8,000 followers. And it grew, and it grew, and it worked. Um, let's see, what is the next? Um, so um, the followers um, uh, keep growing, and um, especially my posts uh, with humor, with uh, to have fun of, they had lots of likes. You can see there uh, this bingo which say, with um, the things you say. Uh, and you think, oh my gosh, um, my mom comes out. There's, yeah, it's Dutch, so uh, I don't know the English expressions. Um, uh, bingo, uh, 5,000 likes, 3,500 3, shares, 1,000 uh, reactions. So uh, there was a really high engagement level, which helped me growing and growing. So one year later, 52,000 followers, another year later, 
2015, 000, uh, 85 uh, followers in 2015. So this hobby of mine clearly got a bit of, out of hand and it became more and more serious. Um, uh, but I was still working as a copywriter. It was never my intention to make a living out of this or something. Um, it was still a promotion tool for my book. Um, and I didn't even have a proper site. It was just my Facebook page. I had my, I had my own blog site, but it was not uh, like a very professional thing or something. Um, and when I had, oh yeah, so this is how it grew. And when I had almost 100,000 likes, I thought, um, uh, let's find out what possibilities there are. Because more and more people uh, came to ask me, can I put something on your site? Lots of people wanted something from me. So I thought, that, well, there must be something more. But how am I going to do this? I did not have a clue what um, blogging was about. I didn't know the blogger's world at all. So. Um, I, I thought I'm going to look for uh, people and um, I'm going to see what's possible. So I start Googling <laughs> how to make money blogging. I really had no idea because Facebook is something else than blogging. Um, I talked to people. Um, I also found out that there are a lot of people out there who want to take advantage of you. Um, that made me ner more nervous. Um, for example, there was this agency that said, oh, yes, I help you, you're going to be big, uh, let's build a, a site for you, and we do your promotions, and um, we'll have 50% share. And I thought, no, <laughs> that doesn't sound like a good deal. Um, I'm going to uh, get some more information about blogging, and uh, I'm going to start when I'm a bit more confident about this. So it took me a while to find the right people. Um, but then I had this logo. Uh, somebody helped me uh, building the blog for not a lot of money. I found uh, another agency who was um, uh, helping me with uh, sponsors, um, uh, an, agency that I, an agency that I trusted more. And uh, one and a half year ago, something, uh, let's see, yeah, it was November 2015. I um, released my website. So this was the message on Facebook that said, ta-da, my website is there and we're now a professional club. So this is the site, which is now uh, live for one and a half year. And um, I started to make money with it all of a sudden. But before uh, telling you um, about my earnings, um, I'd like to share some of the success factors of the club uh, with you first. Why does it work? Because there are so many uh, mom blogs out there. Why, what, is, what is something I do that is what's making me uh, grow like this? Well, let's see. Um, all of this started with my fear about becoming this real mom with the corners of my mouth uh, down. So the first thing is, thing is like my books, um, uh, I want to have fun. I want to make moms laugh. I want to take, uh, help them with not taking the mom business too serious. So um, the first thing I think is my success factor is because it's fun. Um, you can find your daily doses of laughter uh, at my site. There's uh, out there on the internet, there are so many things, um, uh, uh, violent or whatever, uh, uh, not nice thing. Things. I think uh, at my side, people are happy to find the laughter, so um, jokes like this. You take everything with a pinch of salt, it's on my, on my, <laughs> on my note here. Um, but also, uh, it's not only fun, it also can give you also a, a bit of a tear. It's also honest and vulnerable. I'm not only laughing. Uh, this Relax Mama book is, it's, it's, uh, this is, you may think it's one and a half, one and a, one hundred and one jokes, but I also have a, a message with it that uh, you can keep laughing, 
but I know it's hard. So that's what we uh, share in this clip as well. We know it's hard, and sometimes we're honest and really vulnerable about this. Last month, I had a blog. Uh, one of my um, uh, uh, one of the mothers of my bloggers team, she wrote a blog about um, uh, coffee tight. It's called. That sometimes it's quite lonely to be a mom. If you have two small children at home and you can't go out, you drink your coffee alone again. Uh, and a lot of uh, people, mothers, recognize it. So this blog got 983 likes, which is quite a lot for a blog. So we're not only happy and funny, but also honest and vulnerable. Third point. Um, that's the idea of recognizability. Uh, um, I think that's a real strength. Uh, a lot of people recognize what I write and also can laugh about it then. Um, I, share, I share stories that uh, hundreds of mamas uh, recognize. And sometimes these are only the small things, the things you won't share with your friends when you're having dinner. For example, a small thing is that you keep mixing up the, the names of your children. Well, you're not going to, but in the moment, it's really funny. And if you post something about it, everybody recognizes it. And if you write this down in a funny way, it's good for thousands of likes. So people like to laugh about the stupid things we do as a mother or father, of course. Um, and uh, so sometimes it's only the small things and sometimes the bitter, bi bigger things, uh, for example, about how hard it sometimes is to combine your role as a mother and your career you're building. So all these themes come. So it's, my blog is not about raising children, about, um, about parenthood in that way. I don't know anything about raising. I'll, I'll do whatever I do. And that's what people recognize in me. I'm one of them. Uh, number four, I think it works because it's real and it's in the moment. Um, last week, um, well, like yesterday, it was raining here. And um, we had a uh, spring holiday a couple of uh, two weeks ago in Holland. And, um, but it, was, it, 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 it looked like um, autumn break. So I posted this, uh, uh, this picture, which said in English, Hey, Mr. Universe, is it possible you accidentally pushed the autumn break button? And I pushed it on the moment it was raining, and lots of moms were sitting at home with their children, wishing the weather was better because it was spring break. So um, I think that's one of my strengths, uh, that I post things in the moment when I'm experiencing them myself. I think uh, mothers recognize this uh, energy. Um, where this is my strength, it's also my weakness because this makes my, work a bit, uh, my way of working a bit chaotic sometimes, and I'm not a very good planner, which is not very good for me to stay relaxed, but anyway, it's also my strength. Number five, what was it? It's the tone of voice. Um, I'm really um, consistent with this tone of voice. Uh, I will never put a finger. I will never, um, I, I will always be respectful to other moms. will never think, oh, look at that mom, what's she, uh, what's she doing? Or it's always respectful. Um, um, at this clip of Relax Mom, uh, we don't laugh at each other, but we do laugh at ourselves, and it's, um, it's positive. And I'm really proud uh, that this, uh, to notice how well this tone goes down, because in the comments, uh, uh, the, the tone is also always respectful, which is not on a lot of sites, Facebook sites or Twitter. People can be, be very harsh to each other, but... Um, I think for 97% of the time, um, the, the comments on my Facebook posts are very uh, respectful as well. And then six, I think the last one. Stick to the plan. I have this um, thing I want to tell with this page, and um, it's not. It's I want to give those pick me ups. I want to give a smile, sometimes a tear, and everything I do should be uh, within that plan, should be, uh, uh, how do you say that? Uh, it must fit into, yeah, in, into the skill concept. So I think that's very important, that you stick to your plan. Okay then, what does it bring me? 
Um, well, this decision to start this club, it really changed my life, well, at least my career. Um, it gave me the opportunity uh, to write the things I want to write, uh, not only online, but after uh, Relax Mama came out, I also wrote a book, Love Mama, and on this uh, table there are several other books um, you can have a look at later. I will put them on that table so you can uh, look around. It's in Dutch, but a lot of them are with pictures, so you will all understand. So um, it, it brought me, uh, it brought me uh, that I can do what I love most, writing. Um, it gave me a complete new network. Like six years ago, seven years ago, I was a knowledge manager at PricewaterhouseCoopers. And uh, now I met so many uh, uh, different people o online. It gave me a complete new network. I'm, I'm here with you. Um, I would never have thought that uh, six years ago. Um, it gives me the opportunity to give lectures and workshops um, and talks like this. But I also give workshops for moms, for the Lex Mama workshop, and um, uh, half an hour or an hour workshops. And I, I show people, I show the mothers um, pages from my book, and I ask them questions to challenge them to think about motherhood, and, and we laugh together. And it's a workshop uh, where mothers uh, can uh, become relaxed. Um, I get uh, asked for uh, cool events and for interviews for magazines and radio, um, which would never have happened if I didn't start this. And, um, well, a lot, uh, very uh, important, all the lovely reactions and gratitude from readers uh, I get every day, which makes me, makes me really happy. But then, what about the money? <laughs> Well, as it was my hobby first, uh, I, I never earned money with it uh, um, um, before this year. But when I started the site, I, um, I found out what ways would be uh, good for me to do this. And there are three ways uh, in, in which I uh, earn the money. The first is, um, well, the bloggers will recognize, it's the, the streamers. That's a small part of my earnings. Second is the affiliate program for the books with um, Dutch uh, bookstores. Uh, but my main income is uh, with sponsored blogs. Uh, and this was a big shift for me to write for sponsors because I never did it. I always said no when people asked me to do something because I thought, oh, this doesn't fit my, my, uh, my strategy, doesn't fit my page. But now I decided I'm going to write for sponsors, and it made me nervous because I didn't know if my followers would, were going to accept this. Um, but um, I learned this year what suited the club and what didn't suit the club, and it always had to fit the, my, my, my page. So uh, when I do a sponsor blog, um, it should give uh, mothers a smile or some recognition, or I have to offer my readers something. It, uh, it doesn't... It, it, I'm all, uh, yeah, how do I say this? I don't want it to only pay me, give me something, but it must give me, give my followers also something. And I'm, I'm really, um, I don't know how to say this, harsh on this, is that good English? Tough on this, yeah. And, um, and that worked out. I had some really nice campaigns. Um, I think my most successful one was my first one. It was for a Dutch dairy company. And they, asked me, they were organizing a run. They wanted um, uh, their own running team with uh, women, with mothers, and they asked if I wanted to run with them and if I wanted to tell something about it. And this was a good idea because this was last year, January 2016, and I wanted to uh, start running myself anyway, so now I was paid for it to do it, <laughs> which uh, gave me uh, uh, more... Uh, um, uh, motivation to do it anyway. So I asked moms uh, to join my Club van die Lexa Mooders running team, and uh, now there are about 900 mothers running with me. <laughs> and, and I got a lot of uh, stories from women who said, oh, I never, I d never did it, but now because of you I started running again. So that's, well, this is really uh, uh, fulfilling, I must say. So this is my, my nicest sponsored blog. But um, another example is, um, 
uh, the car brand Opel asked me to do something, and I thought, no way, cars and mothers, I'm not going to ride for Opel. Uh, but then I thought, well, it's raining a lot in Holland. Mo some moms uh, don't have cars. We always have to drive around on our bikes and bringing our kids there, getting our shoppings and everything, and you always get wet. So why don't I do something with that? And I said, okay, I want to ride a block, and I offer myself as a taxi driver. So, um, so that was successful as well. Then. <laughs> and I drove around uh, a family um, uh, all over Holland who wanted to visit friends and family, and, uh, and I made a, made a vlog, my first vlog, and my only vlog, by the way. <laughs> so that was one. And then another example is uh, this one. Uh, Kid Talk, it's called. <laughs> it's about the uh, lingerie brand Triumph who asked me if I wanted to write something about their Magic Boost campaign. And um, uh, I wrote a blog about how your breasts change after giving, after giving birth. And, um, well, that offered a lot of recognition to women. Uh, and I interviewed my friends, so I didn't have to tell anything about my own breasts. <laughs> <laughs> and my friends luckily said a lot of funny, funny things about their breasts, so it was a really nice blog. Uh, and I could offer, uh, and I could uh, raffle two bras, so there was uh, a gift to my followers as well. So that's where we stand now. One year later, uh, I'm, uh, I'm really proud of what I, uh, what I built, that my hobby uh, uh, is now my, my job. Um, I'm really proud that it's still um, um, this real feel-good club. I'm really proud that I have now uh, a small team of bloggers with me who help me. I'm really proud of all the books I wrote. I'm really proud that I can uh, help women to smile every now and then, a day, although it's quite hard uh, maybe that day, and then I, I'll, I'll still give them a smile. Um, and um, yeah, I'm really proud that I was invited to speak here.